Hey, everybody. Welcome. We are so glad you could join us today. Um, and welcome to Miss Tina Bartlemé. I need like a little drum set or <laughs> some sound. Um, today, we're going to be discussing things about the scan and cut. She has some awesome things planned for you. So um, without further ado, here is Miss Tina Bartlemé herself. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us here today. I got lots of different project ideas for you. And please um, put some questions in the comments for us. It One, it keeps us all awake and energized. And if you're thinking about that question, somebody else for sure has it. All right. So let's go ahead and get going. Um, I'm using the Scan and Cut SDX 330D today. If you have a different model and you have questions about how things work on yours, don't hesitate to reach out. All right. So let's just go over to the scan and cut and um, let's go to the scan and cut. So this is the home screen on your machine. And I thought maybe we just do a quick little general overview just in case maybe you haven't uh, used it a lot. But what, one of the features that's really nice on the scan and cut is that it has so many patterns on the machine itself. And so if we come in here to patterns, you'll notice that we have a couple of pages and these aren't the designs themselves. These are actually folders full of designs. So some of the things that you have, you've got simple shapes like squares and circles and hearts and that kind of stuff that are fun for projects. You also have um, a bunch of different themes. So you've got flowers and snowflakes and travel themed things. Um, you've got little picture frames that you can make. You've even got 3D boxes in here, envelopes, so all kinds of different projects that are right here on the machine and, and don't require you to buy anything extra. Of course, Disney, this is one of the Disney models, and so it's got lots of Disney designs. Mickey and the princesses have got Frozen. Beautiful designs that are fun for, again, lots and lots of different projects. So if you haven't explored the designs that are on your machine, really recommend that you do that. There's all kinds of, of fun content in here. Now, in addition to the patterns that are on your scan and cut, you can also bring patterns in from outside. And to do that, you'll come in here to retrieve data. And you have different places to pull it in from. So some things you may have saved on the machine previously, and so you get those out of the machine icon. Um, they may be on a flash drive, in which case you can choose this and put the flash drive uh, in the USB port on the side of the machine. You can also send things to the machine wirelessly, and there's a number of ways that that can happen, Artsphere app or directly from your computer, to name a few. So you can bring in and use all kinds of designs either on the machine or that you may already have. Now, let's look here for a second. You'll notice here you get the, the wireless icon. This is a wireless machine. That's why we're able to send things to it wirelessly. Um, scanning, and we'll do some of this a little bit later. This is where you can take a picture of fabric or sticker sheets that are on the mat, and then you can uh, use a fussy cutting feature to turn that image into cut data. So that'll be fun. We'll play with that later on today. If you have some of the premium uh, kits for your machine, you'll see those listed here. So I've got the roll feeder, the region emboss. I've got some extra pattern collections I bought. And then my connection is a really cool feature. And in fact, we're doing a webinar on this uh, next month in May on my connection where we will be uh, doing the scan and cut and the embroidery machine at the same time. But the way my connection works, if you haven't played with it yet, I can take the non-Disney shapes from my scan and cut and I can wirelessly send those over to my Luminaire. They'll land in the design center and then I can assign stitches to it. So it's a really cool way to bring in additional shapes for extra project ideas to your machine. And then of course, when you're at your um, embroidery machine, you can take fill stitch designs and you can convert part of the fill stitch areas into applique and you can wirelessly send those cut files over to the scan and cut. So it's got a lot of really cool features in my connection. So that gets us through um, a, a general overview for the machine. So I thought maybe we would start with a couple of common uh, materials that we cut and that's going to be um, we're going to do some adhesive vinyl and so adhesive vinyl is the kind that um, is like a sticker paper in some ways you could cut it and you could uh, attach it to a wall you could put, we're going to put it on a greeting card you could put it on you can put it on like a glass plate or a cutting board or something like that 
So we're going to do adhesive vinyl first. And then once I show you how to do that, I'm going to go through that same uh, design a second time. And we're going to pretend that we're cutting it out of heat transfer vinyl because there are some differences in how we apply those two. So let's pop back over to our scan and cut and get started on this. So I'm using one of the Disney applique patterns that's on the machine. And the, this is the category right here. Now, they are set up to do applique, but that doesn't mean you have to use them to do applique work, right? You can, like, I'm going to cut them out of adhesive and heat transfer vinyl. So don't get locked into thinking that designs are only meant to be used in one way. They're, you can use them in lots of different ways. So I'm going to choose this cute little um, Nikki pattern here. Now, when you're on this screen here, if you want to resize it, you can. Minus will make it smaller, of course, and plus is going to make it bigger. So you can resize it the way you want. Let's say I'm going to take it up to exactly four inches here. And then we'll say OK. And then you'll see that it's bringing up all the different parts of the design for me on the screen, right? And so what I want to do, you have choices of which of these you're going to cut, right? So I'm going to start with the background piece here. And I'll say OK and set. And it's going to bring it onto my map. Now, what I want to do is I want to cut out all the black pieces as a single piece. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add, and I'm going to pick up his, the interior of his little ears here. All right. And I'm not going to change the size because it already resized all the elements of the design once. And I want to make sure that that matches up. And then I'm just going to take the stylus and I'm going to pop him in here and get him lined up the way he should be in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and add again. And this time I'm going to pull up the M, okay, and we'll bring it in and set it, and we'll set him down in here, and I'll get him, and by the way, when you're doing this, it might be a little hard for you to see this on your screen. If you want a bigger uh, image, just go to edit, and then you can see the magnifying glass right here, and that way you can magnify it. So I can see here that I don't quite have my M in the right position. He needs to come over just a little bit like this. But it's much easier to see that when I'm on this screen and it's a little bit bigger. I'm going to pop it down too a little bit. Now, if you haven't ever used the magnifying glass, the set of arrows here is going to actually move your design on the mat. The ones down here will actually allow you to scroll down and see a lower area of the map. So that all looks really good to me. I'm going to say OK. And I'm done editing. But I still, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the last detail of the star at the same time. So I'm going to go back to add. This time I'm going to grab the star. Now, I don't want the star to be on top of the rest of the design because I'm actually going to cut it out of a different color of material. So I'm just going to grab it and drag it down on my mat just like this. All right. So, I, so this basically, even though I put three different things together here, when it cuts, I'll end up with one single piece that then I can add this to, okay? So we're done editing at this point. We're gonna say, okay. And now the machine is waiting for us to tell it what we want it to do. So we come into please select, and you got all kinds of options here. You can cut, you can put pens in and draw, emboss, foil, um, pierce paper, all kinds of stuff. I told you we're gonna cut adhesive vinyl, so we're gonna go ahead and choose our cut option here. All right, now, Couple settings are important to know when you're cutting these type of materials. So for those of you who may not, for those of you who may not have cut adhesive vinyl in the past, just so you know, it's a two layer material. So you have the vinyl with the sticky back and it's on a carrier sheet, right? And particularly, imagine you were cutting out like a confetti on a birthday cake. You would not want to have to place each one of those little confetti pieces manually. You'd want to keep them all together. And so as you're cutting it, since it's a two-layer material, there's a setting on the machine called half cut that will cut through the vinyl, but it will leave the carrier sheet intact, which will keep all those little pieces together. Okay. So let's pop back over here and I'll show you where that setting is. So the, the icon that looks like a wrench is where we get to settings. So once we press here. We're going to tab down to the second page, and you'll notice there's a feature called half cut, and that's what we want to turn on. That means it's going to cut through my vinyl, but it's not going to cut through my carrier sheet, so I want that on. Now, if you want to adjust cutting pressure, remember, if, let's just, not to confuse you, but if we go back to the top, there's a cut speed and pressure for cutting all the way through the materials on the first page, 
but we're working with our half cut, so we want to make those pressure adjustments here for the half cut pressure. And then sometimes it's nice to turn on a weeding box, and that just gives you a, a rectangle or a square around your design. It helps you conserve vinyl, and it also makes it a little bit easier to weed when you're done. So we would turn this on just like you see here. And it's going to up. So it's telling me right now that I, the, way, where, the place that I put my design did not allow enough uh, room for my weeding box. And so it says, OK, to continue. I could go back here and I could move my design further into my mat and then the weeding box would work. That's one thing I could do. I've already cut it out, so I'm not going to bother to do that at this point. And then. Um, you don't have to do a test cut with a scan and cut because it has something called auto blade technology. But if you've used your blade on a lot of different materials and you don't know how much wear is on it or you're cutting out something for the first time, it's always a good idea to do a test cut. And that's where you would come in here and you would pick a shape. So most of my lines are curves. I would leave the circle here. And this is what you could use to allow you to move it somewhere on the mat. If you haven't scanned the map to know where your vinyl pieces are, you can use the scanning icon right here to take that picture and then you can make sure everything's right where you want it to be. Then when you're done, I don't have a mat in right now, which is why this is grayed out. You'd hit start, it would do your test cut. If that turned out well, you would hit start a second time and it would actually cut out your materials. So let's, let's look over here because I have cut this out for us and let's talk about a few things. So first of all, Adhesive vinyl has a paper backing, and so the mat that I want to be using is my low-tech mat, and that's the one here. It's got the teal bottom. When I'm looking at what blade to use to cut adhesive vinyl, I have two really good choices. I could use my standard auto blade that you see on the left, or I could use my new rotary cutter here on the right, and they're both really good choices, and so um, it's totally up to you which one you prefer. I know I have several friends who just basically cut everything out now with the rotary blade because I don't have to think about their, their blade choices, and I support that choice as well. All right, so once it's cut out, here, here it is on the mat. Now, of course, you take off that clear plastic cover when it's on the, on the machine when you're cutting it, but my pieces have been cut. I weeded the outside piece away from this one, and then I have the star down here. So if you have not had the lovely experience of weeding a piece of vinyl, it's really not too bad. My star is cut kind of in the middle. I'm just going to take my weeding tool out to the corner. I'm going to lift up the corner like you see here. And sometimes it's actually helpful to leave it on the, um, on the uh, mat, if you would, while you're doing the weeding. Um, it just helps hold it in place. And then you just gently pull the excess material away. And then we're left with our little star. So that wasn't too bad, right? So now let's do it with the other piece. The other piece is going to be a little bit more complicated because I have some interior pieces that I'm removing. So I don't know if you can tell from where you are, but there's an interior part of his little ears here. So again, same kind of thing. I'm grabbing it with a weeding tool, and then I'm gently pulling away the part that I don't want to be part of my finished design. And now I'm going to go in and grab the M. It's a little hard for me to see in the lighting, but here we go. And I don't know if you can notice, and maybe some of you have cut some things before and not had quite as easy of an experience in the weeding. Um, if you have your cut settings correct, and unless you're using a really unusual material, this is how easy it really is to weed. You just basically grab it with a weeding tool, and it should pretty quickly and easily pick up and move. All right. So now we've weeded our design. We're going to go ahead and apply it on a greeting card. Let's look at the mat out of the way. Because in case you haven't done this, this is another kind of fun process. So you might be wondering, well, how in the world is she going to pick that stuff up off of there and get it on the card without having things wrinkle or catch on something or kind of make a mess? And the answer to that question is we use this awesome material that's called transfer tape and you can see it here there's different kinds of transfer tapes with different amounts of tack to them um, some have grid lines like you see mine has here some are are completely clear they're all good products it really doesn't matter which one you pick um, just experiment with some and find one that you like so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull and this has a sticky 
sticky side right here. So what I'm going to do is pull the transfer tape off. Okay. I'm going to lay it down over my vinyl just like this. And then I'm going to use either the brayer or this little scrapey tool to make sure that my, whoops, let me move this up so you can see better. Make sure that my transfer tape sticks really well to my sticker. Okay, so I'm, I'm partially done here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it now over. So now that I've stuck the transfer tape to the vinyl, I need to pull the backing paper off. And the goal is that I'm going to be leaving my adhesive vinyl on the transfer tape. Okay, so that's keeping all the elements together nice and neat and tidy for me okay so that part was done so far we're doing really well here's my greeting card that i want to apply it on now the one thing to know um, when you're applying adhesive vinyl is you really only get one shot to get it down so you do want to take a second you want to make sure that your placement is good that you're centered the way you that you like it okay and then you'll lay it down once again you can take your scraping tool or the brayer and this time what I'm trying to do is I want the back of the black vinyl to stick to the card so that when I carefully remove my transfer tape now, the vinyl is actually going to stay in, on the card and not pick up and lift and come with me. And if you have any issues, your weeding tool is a great friend for you when you're doing this applying. If you see a piece like that, try and lift up. You can get in there with your weeding tool and hold it down while you're pulling the transfer tape away. All right, so, so far we're half done. That wasn't too bad, right? Pretty easy. So now we'll just repeat with the star. So here's my star. Transfer tape goes on top. Use the scraper tool to make sure that the it sticks to my vinyl here. I'm gonna lift this up. No, nope, this might've been a little bit easier if I gave myself a smaller piece of transfer tape, but. I know you guys can figure it out. So same kind of thing here. I'm pulling away the backing paper and leaving the vinyl adhered to my transfer tape. Okay. Now I've just got one thing left to do, and that's to kind of look at this, get it lined up as good as I can. All right. We'll take the scraper tool one more time to get it on there nice and good. And then just like we did last time, we're going to carefully pull away the transfer tape, leaving our finished design behind. Pretty fun, right? It, was, it wasn't very hard. It was, it was pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm kind of curious, Sarah, how, how many folks have actually used adhesive vinyl before? Um, anybody think it would be harder than that? I've used it before. Um... Never put it on a card. I don't know why I haven't thought about that yet. Um, you know, I've been into cards recently, but that's a great idea. It's really cute. I love it. Isn't that um, cute? I, really like yeah, that. I love using it. He said vinyl. I have a question for you, and we have a couple of questions whenever you're ready. Um, yeah, on card decals and windows and stuff like that, you know how you said you only get one chance to really yeah. do it? Well, I've seen videos of where they take a spray bottle and put water and a little bit of dish soap and then uh -huh. spray it. Have you ever used that? Do you recommend it or? Um, I've done it twice, two, two times. It worked out okay both times. I would, I would, before you put it on your real project, I would test it on a similar material first just to make sure that it works. One of my tries, once I put the soapy water, it killed the adhesive and then it just blew in the wind. It didn't st stick anymore. So that's why I would recommend trying it on it before you do your real project. Yeah. Okay, and you ready for the next questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Miss Diane said, will my connection work with the SDX 230D? I... Um, not, I think it does. I'm not a hundred percent. I'll look at my phone, remind me later on and I'll come back and look at that. We will find out before the end of this slide for you. Yep. Miss and by the way, what, while she's on that, um, for you guys, if you have questions like that, there's a phone app that's called, let me put it on this real quick. Um, let me make it big. It's called the 
brother support center. So you just, you can download it on your phone and then you can put whatever product you're interested in up here. So right now mine's on the Stellaire, but you can access the manual. And so for example, my connection was an addendum to the manual and you can look in there and, and it'll tell you right away whether it's compatible and also give you the little operational manual so you know exactly how it works. Sorry, I forgot I'm muted. Um, <laughs> so we have a couple more. So Miss Roberta Bland said hi from Southern Illinois. Hi, hey, Roberta. Miss um, Pam Wade, she said hello. Um, she said she's used the adhesive vinyl, but not on cards yet. Um, and so are you using colored vinyl? Um, yes, I and I uh, yes. So I have a black and a red adhesive vinyl in here. Um, that of course the adhesive vinyl comes in all the different colors, and you can get it with glitter in it and all kinds of specialty effects as well. So um, go wild at the vinyl store because the more choices you have, the more the more projects you can do. <laughs> and Sarah, you're muted again. My bad. Sorry. No worries. Miss Kathy said, okay, thank you. You're welcome. All righty. Miss Sissy Hawkins said, hi, hi, Roberta. Oh, oh I, I looked up during, during our little break, the, um, my connection right now, uh, for the two works with two scan and cut models, the SDX 325 and the 330 at this point, I know that they continue to add additional machines, um, to that. So keep looking. You never know. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, just remember, if you're just popping on, if you have any questions, don't feel like any question is a bad question because I'm sure if you're thinking it, somebody else is thinking it too. So go ahead and whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can drop them in the comment section and we will put them on screen and um, Miss Tina will answer them for us. So do we have a break right now for specials or do you want to continue going? That's a you question. I'm good either way. Okay. So a lot of the stuff she's showing, if you have past models, I know um, the 230, it doesn't come with the rotary blade, but you can purchase the kit, right? Yep. So if you have something like that and you're interested in the kits um, for like the rotary blade or the auto blade, stuff like that, we have those on special. So you can give us a call. Um, at 850-830-4815 um, or the shop at 403-7332 and we can help you out and get you lots of good specials and lots of stuff. So um, machines, notions that she's going to be showing, we can get them ordered for you and we ship. So just let us know and you can call us. So awesome. that's all I have. Miss um, right. You're good to go. And then if you have any questions, remember, just put them in the comment section. We'll stop at another 15 minutes down the road, something like that, and answer some more. So, All right. So we're going to go back to the scan and cut. And this time we're going to cut, we're going to go back a little bit. So same design as we just did. But this time, instead of using adhesive vinyl, we're going to use heat transfer vinyl, which is also a two-layer material. But... Just to make it a little confusing, when you cut heat transfer vinyl, you actually cut it upside down, okay? And so that means whenever you have a design that has um, directionality to it, like most of the letters, right, um, you're going to want to mirror image your design. So before I would cut this little guy here in heat transfer vinyl, I'd come back in to edit, and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to group these three parts up here together. Oh, I don't want to group these three here together into a single design. So I just went into um, select and I'm using the arrows to crop those three together. All right. And then I want to uh, come in here and group those. And that, that will allow me to mirror image it with all three of them moving together as opposed to only capturing one element. 
All right, now that I have it, I'm on the edit screen. And let's talk about the options here. The one we're gonna end up using is mirror. So this is gonna flip it to reflect that I'm cutting it upside down. But your other choices here, this one allows you to change the size. So if you've got to resize it earlier, you can resize it here. This one, if I wanted to cut out multiples, I could tell it how many total copies I want here. This one will rotate. We wouldn't add a seam allowance for vinyl, but that's what that one's for. This one is one of the fill pattern um, options with the drawing tool, and we'll get to some of these others later on today, okay? But I've got them grouped. That's why you see the arrow around everything. So we're going to go ahead and mirror image it so that we're cutting it. I don't remember if I did already or not, but anyways, make sure you have it mirrored. And then you'll say, okay. And then once again, you'll come in and you'll tell it that you want it to cut. And remember I said, this is another two layer material. And so just like we did last time, we're gonna make, go into settings and we wanna make sure that that half cut setting is turned on, all right? And then your cut pressure, a lot of times when I'm cutting this, I'll just leave my cut pressure on auto. And then if I, you know, if I notice that it's not cutting really well or whatnot, I'll increase the pressure. Um, but you can always start with auto. And by the way, if you ever are in a situation where you need to increase the cut pressure because it didn't give you a clean cut, only increase it in increments of one and then retest. Don't go from like auto to five or you're, you will very likely cut a hole in your mat. Okay, ask me how I know these things. All right. So that's all we would have to do at the, uh, at the machine itself. I, again, I've already cut this one out. So we're going to go to the overhead camera and I'm going to show you a few things about this. All right. So first of all, mat choice with heat transfer vinyl, we're going to be using our standard tack mat, which you see here, it's got the purple banner at the bottom blade choices. We have the same blade choices as last time. I could e either use the standard auto blade or I could use the rotary blade. Both of them will do a great job. Um, so it's it's your choice on how you wanna cut that. I will say though, if I had a very detailed or intricate design, in that case, I would tend to either use my auto blade. There's one other blade that you can use actually when you're cutting out vinyl and that's the vinyl auto blade, all right? But anything that was very detailed, I would probably edit out my rotary um, blade simply because it cuts so much more slowly, I would opt to one of these highly detailed and very intricate. I'd be using my vinyl auto blade and that's an optional accessory that you can buy for the machine. If it's not too complicated, then I would be using my standard blade, okay? So we've got, you've got lots of blade options here. So I've already cut this guy out again, like last time and weeded it. But by the way, when it's on the mat, it's cutting this way. So the clear backing material is affixed directly to the cutting mat, right? And you cut it and then I pull away the vinyl because when I touch the backside of my heat transfer vinyl, there's no uh, feeling of tack to it at all. It's a heat activated glue, okay? So here you can see, I put that same little design on a little doll t-shirt. Um, and because it's a two layer design, I get asked lots of times, how do you layer heat transfer vinyl? It's really pretty simple. You put the bottom layer on first, and then I use the heat press. You could also use an iron, but I basically, uh, on the heat press, I put it in at 320 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 seconds. It's not enough for a, a final fuse, but it's enough to activate the adhesive on the back of the vinyl so that it will stick to the little doll shirt. So you can see now I can basically peel away the transfer tape and it stayed on the shirt, right? And that's what I want. And then I'm gonna layer the other piece uh, on top. Another thing for you guys to think about, especially those of you who have a heat press, this little doll t-shirt, just so you can see, on the back side has a Velcro closure and that means it's kind of lumpy bumpy in the middle. And so these pressing pillows are really handy to use on anything with a zipper or a heavy seam or any kind of, I don't know, lumpiness to it. Um, to even that out because what will happen is the place that has the lump um, behind it gets more pressure as you're pressing it and it will adhere better and you have the chance of the things on either side of it not actually the glue not not sticking and so these little pressing pillows are really handy to have um, they're easy to get online you can also make one yourself it's basically high density foam 
wrapped in a Teflon sheet and then sewn together with cotton thread. So um, I, I need one for my 16 by 24 inch press and I can't find one. So I've ordered the foam and I'll be making one of those myself. So anyways, I have the base layer on here. It's time to add the star. So again, I'm going to take the star. Now this, I can pick it up and move it around. It has a light tack to the carrier sheet, but nothing on the vinyl. So I have a little bit more um, wiggle room in terms of placement, as you see here. And then a couple things that we have to think about here. I don't know if you can tell, but the carrier sheet that I have for the star ends right here. So I'd have parts of the little mouse ears that wouldn't be protected by a, a carrier sheet. Um, and when I hit that with an iron or a heat press, if I tried it just like this, it would stick to my press or my iron and that would be bad, right? For lots of reasons. And so you can either take the larger transfer tape from the bigger design and put it on top. Or what I typically do at home is I have parchment paper, the same stuff you use in the kitchen for baking and that kind of stuff so your food doesn't stick to your pans. And I would lay a sheet of parchment paper on top of the full design. And then for the once I have all the pieces on here, I would then give it a full press. So for this particular vinyl, that would be 320 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds. And it's a warm peel. So as it's still warm from the press, I would pull off the transfer tape and it would be completely done. So super easy, um, not a whole lot of steps, but it, it is different than the adhesive vinyl. So Sarah, anyone have questions on our heat transfer vinyl or HTV you might have heard it called before? Um, so we do have one. Um, okay. We have to reset it to half cut every time. Um, no, because uh, when I was in there, mine was already the half cut was on because it was the last setting that I used. But just discipline yourself, especially if you're doing a bunch of projects in a day right before you you go. Make sure half you if you want half cut on, it's on. If you want it off, it's off. Make you a little checklist. Make sure you uh, mine is mirror imaging. Yep. Can't tell you how many times I've cut it out. I'm like, um, I can read that. <laughs> it shouldn't be like that. Um, like, <sighs> Um, Miss Rosemary Ropke said, great information. We all need a refresher sometimes. Thank you, Ruthie. We all love Tina. Oh, thank you. Alrighty. So that's all we have. Um, just remember if you have any questions or anything, just put them down in the comments. All right. So let's go back to the screen because we're going to have a fun little journey next. So I'm going to take one design and we're going to make a whole bunch of different projects with it. And I'm going to walk you through the settings as we go. Because I think, I think you know, a lot of us, we do a couple of different materials all the time. We, we nail those, but then it's time to do something different and we're, we go into panic mode, right? So just for fun, we're going to come into patterns. And I'm going to go down. Oops, I think I move over here. All right. I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to go down to the second page, the one with the little fairy on it. And I'm going to grab this little flower, which to me kind of reminds me of a chrysanthemum, right? And you can size it however you want to do it, whatever is appropriate for your project size. Um, and then we'll go ahead and set it. All right. So I'm going to kind of bump it into the middle of the mat. All right. So we're going to do, let's say that we're going to use adhesive vinyl because we want to put this flower on a coffee mug and we want all these little interior parts to be yellow, and then we want a black for the outline, right? That's that's what our project goal is at this point. So um, I've got a couple of things to do, right? Especially if I want to cut out both parts on the mat at the same time, I'm actually going to uh, come into edit, and I'm going to make a second copy of the design. So that remember this one with the plus sign. And it's not, I want to add one. The number here needs to be the total number of copies that you want, right? So I'll come in here so it says two. So now I have two of the flowers. So basically same design, same size. I'm going to cut this one out of yellow vinyl and I'm going to cut this one out of black vinyl, right? And then we're going to, then we would apply just like I showed you with a little greeting card. So we'd say, okay, we're done editing at this point. Um, Again, we can scan the mat and see exactly where our materials are. I'll do that later for you with a quilt blocks in case you haven't done that before. Make sure it's on our materials. And again, we want it to cut just like we have. And we're doing adhesive vinyl for the coffee mug, right? So again, under our settings, 
we're going down and our half cut is on. You notice it was on a minute ago and it's still on because I haven't changed it. And unless I have some reason to change my half cut pressure, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in auto and then cut it out. And then let's see how cute this little mug is as soon as I reach under my table here. All right, so now we're, look how cute that is, super easy. So basically I use the transfer tape over the yellow pieces first because they were the bottom layer, if you would, applied those. And then, so when you cut it out, you only save the yellow, the, these little petal pieces out of the yellow. When you do the black, you weed all that stuff out and all you're left with is that is basically that heavy outline line. And then you apply that as a, in a second pass with a transfer tape. Um, and then you have a coffee mug. Now, I don't know how many of you have done coffee mugs and those types of things. I would recommend a permanent vinyl for this particular application. So adhesive vinyl comes in a, a permanent and a non-permanent finish, right? So um, as an example, non-permanent would be I want to do a wall mural that I might want to take off someday without having to basically sand down my drywall. <laughs> so that would be a non-permanent vinyl. Permanent would be more something like a coffee mug or on the non-cutting surface of a glass cutting board, something like that, that is going to be exposed to water sometimes. I still would not put this in the dishwasher. I would hand wash it. Um, but if you take care of it, they actually hang in there pretty long. I've had some that actually stayed together for two years or more. I broke the mug, frankly, before the vinyl came off. Imagine that. Um, and though if in terms of if you're doing a lot of coffee mugs or things like that, the vinyl that I would recommend for this application would be Oracal 651. Um, you can use it for outdoor signage. You can use it for things like coffee mugs, that kind of stuff. All right. All right, so Sarah, interrupt me if there's questions. Otherwise, I'm going to talk about other applications for this uh, particular pattern. All right, so back to our back to our screen here. Back to our screen. Uh, we're going to say okay. I'm going to come back. All right. Now this time, I basically I'm going to take away the second copy. I'm going to delete it. This time I basically want to use an etching con uh, compound and I want to etch the design onto a wine glass, right? So what am I going to cut? I'm going to cut an adhesive vinyl. It doesn't have to be a permanent one, or I could use adhesive stencil material. Either one will work. I'll be honest, for me at home, what I typically do is I always seem to have one or two really, really ugly colors of adhesive vinyl that I'm never, ever going to use. And I use those when I'm doing stencils because, you know, at least then I'm getting some value out of that. Okay. So I would have that. I would have the um, adhesive vinyl on the mat again, because it's adhesive vinyl, the mat that I would have is that teal one, the low tack mat. I would cut the design out once I'm going to weed out. So let's go over the overhead camera real quick for the coffee mug, right? I kept all these little yellow pieces in for the petals, but if I'm going to etch it, I basically need that the where the petals are not to be etched. So I pull all those out and I only um I pull those out and then I also I forgot to show you one other thing at the machine, so let's go back over here. I also added a square around my design because I need a mask around the exterior. So to do that, it would simply be add go to pattern, simple shapes and grab yourself a square, all right? And then basically move that, I need to make it a little bit bigger. Make that bigger than your flower design and then kind of put it in a box and make sure you have enough room around the edges because it's basically gonna be a mask for you when you put the etching compound on. Then you would simply cut that like we have already today uh, with a half cut uh, procedure on. And then when you, you would put that sticker basically on the wine glass, and then you take a paintbrush or one of those sponge paint applicators, and you can put a glass etching cream. This one's called Armor Etch. It's the one I typically use. You paint it over there and you see it goes into all the holes of the pattern, if you would. Leave it on for three minutes and then simply rinse it away with water and then you have etched glass. So pretty cool, right? Love that. All right, Sarah, how are we doing on questions? Any? One other thing while I have you here, um, 
when you're doing things like glass plates or coffee mugs, before you go to apply your vinyl, get some rubbing alcohol um, and a cotton ball and just clean, clean the exterior surface of the cup um, and let it dry completely before you apply the vinyl. A lot of times what we do is we touch the cups when we're working on the project and we get the oils from our fingers on it and that keeps the vinyl from um, sticking when we're doing the project. All right, so I don't see Sarah, so we're gonna just keep going here. All right, we're gonna come back over to the scan and cut machine. Now this time, this one's gonna be really fun. We're gonna do something different. I'm gonna get rid of the square. So we're gonna make a refrigerator magnet out of this design. It's gonna be super cool. So I don't know if you guys have seen it, but you can actually get magnet paper um, at the craft store. You can get it online. I'll show you when we come back and look at the finished one. But basically it's a thin kind of a pliable, some sort of plasticky stuff that's magnetic with a paper cover on top, okay? So in this case, to make our magnet, we're gonna do two things. We have our design on the screen here, and we're actually going to draw it first, right? So we would come in here for the, for the first pass, we'd have our magnet paper on the mat. We would come in here to our settings, and this time, instead of telling it to cut, we want it to draw, all right? So we would select draw as our action, and then I'll show you in a minute what the pen holder and pen looks like. And you would run it through the machine and it would actually draw the design on the magnet paper for you, okay? So we're gonna go back to the overhead camera and I'm gonna show you really quickly the things that you would use. So this is the magnet paper here. This is the part that we draw on and that's the magnet -y side on the back. All right, the pen holder for your machine is in the little storage drawer with them and you have these little pens that come with it. And so just take the lid off your pen, put it in the pen holder, close the lid like that and it goes into the blade holder on the machine. And always when you're putting the tools in, you want the Brother logo to be facing out or facing you, okay? So we would basically draw our magnet out um, with a pen. And then once it's been drawn, let's come back over to the machine and I'll show you what we do. We've finished, we finished drawing it, okay? So imagine that this is on our mat, it's been drawn. So now I wanna basically create an offset around it. I wanna cut out an outline around it. So I'm gonna to go to edit, I'm gonna to go to object edit. And this is my offset key. So it allows me to bump out the outer edges a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna take it out about to here, all right, and I'll say okay. It's gonna process. Now, it did, a, it did a lot of different things in here for me, right? I don't know if you can, I'm gonna come in here and magnify. I made my offset, it captured the outside, but it also captured these interior spaces as well, which I don't wanna pick up or cut. So then I'm basically, I'm gonna delete this because that was the one that was drawn, all right? And I'm going to come in here and I'll basically edit out all the little pieces of stuff that I don't want. So that, see how it was grouped? Now I've ungrouped it. Once I've ungrouped it, then all I want to do is grab that outer area here. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to delete all that stuff. So the easiest way is to come here with a select tool and I'm going to use the one with the arrows. And I'm going to basically move that in so that I have kept the, the big piece, but I'm selecting all those little pieces. Oops, let me come back out of here again. I have to not be selected here. So come in here. If this happens to you, it's because I had this one selected when I chose the tool. Now we'll come in and do that a second time. All right, see how this one is not selected now? These are. Once I have that, I'm going to put those all in the trash can. And that's it. And now I basically would have that outline directly on top of the magnet that I had drawn, cut out the edges, and then I have a refrigerator magnet. So let's go back and look at this really quickly. I kind of went bedazzly crazy with it a little bit, but you can see it's been drawn. I went ahead and took um, a marker and colored the yellow pieces in. And then of course I couldn't stop myself. I put adhesive on it and put some glitter on it. But isn't that a fun way to make 
refrigerator magnets. You can theme them to the holidays or make special magnets for each one of the kids for their activities or anything else you want to do, but really simple and really fun to make personalized magnets with that same design. So Sarah, I'm checking in with you to see if we have any questions before I keep going here. Yes, we do. Um, so Miss Kathy said, can you clean the mats? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, there's a cleaner that I use all the time. I got it at the Dollar Tree store. It's called Totally Awesome. It's like a yellow cleaner in a spray bottle. Mm -hmm. um, just basically saturate your mat with it and take the scraper tool that I showed you earlier, this guy here, and sort of lightly scrape it across the mat and you'll see all kinds of goo that you couldn't even see with your eye kind of collect in the liquid. Then take a paper towel, wipe all that stuff off and get all that excess cleaner off it. Let it air dry for about a minute and a half and it's like having a brand new mat. So the next one says, can you show how to cut out a snap tab? A snap. Hmm. I don't know because I don't have a cut file or any of that for it. Let me ponder on that. Um, and then Miss Mary Barnhill says, wow, good tip about the alcohol. Sorry, Tuckers. <laughs> He's <laughs> trying to join in on the live. Um, but yeah, we don't have any other comments besides that. All right. Well, next we're going to do, we're going to uh, do another greeting card. This time, can you give me the low tech mat? This time, um, just so you know what's happening, I'll walk you through, I'm going to walk you through how I cut the design out of, so this is a card, right? And this is heavy card stock that I cut on the machine. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to put this back on the mat and we're going to put the pen tool in and we're going to draw you know, words or something on here so you can see how the scanning and all that works as well. Okay. So to do the card, we're going to come back in here. I'm just going to go to home and bring up my pattern all over again. So if you guys remember, it was in here. We're going to come into the little fairy category. Uh, it's our little flower right here and we'll set it. Okay. And so um, basically put the heavy card stock on the low tack mat. Remember it's paper. And so if I put it on that standard mat, it, it, the tack would be so high that it would pull the backing of the paper off. So I'm going to use my low tack mat. When I go to cut it, and cutting is what I would do out of the paper. This time, paper you don't, is not a two-layer material, so I want to cut all the way through the paper, right? It would be really frustrating to only score it and not cut it. And so I have to come back into settings. Now I'm going back to my half cut setting, and I'm going to turn it off because I'm telling the machine I want you to cut all the way through the material, all right? And again, um, this is a fairly simple design. You could cut it at anywhere up to probably a cut speed of three and not worry too much about it. Um, I found that I needed a cut pressure of two to go through the heavy card stock, um, and I did that through testing. So that's, what, that's basically what was required to um, cut the flower out um, of heavy card stock, all right? So now I'm going to put the same card. We're going to go to the overhead for a second. I'm going to put that same card now back on the low tack mat. And by the way, I put some um, glue on the back side of it. I basically, it was one of those glue uh, kind of stick things, put it on the back side, affixed it to the card and let it dry. Okay. So now I'm going to put it back on the mat. And because it's white on a white mat, I'm just going to try and use the grid lines to get it lined up so it looks pretty straight here. And I'm just basically, um, this is a great time to use the brayer tool. If you guys haven't gotten the brayer tool, it's one of my favorites. And you don't think you need it, but you, your stuff sticks to the mat so much better when you have it. It's totally worth, worth having. All right, so we're gonna come back to the machine now. Um, just so you know, just here, just, just just so you know, um, I'm using that pen holder I showed you a minute ago with that little black pen in it, and I'm now putting it into the blade holder slot on the machine and locking that. And then I'm going to load the mat here. Okay. Now, when it comes to putting verbiage on something like a card, you've got choices with what's on the machine itself. So, one place you could go is in here where they have full. Um, sentiments 
Um, and basically what they've done is they've taken all the letters in here and they've been welded together. So uh, even though I'm cutting out art, which is three letters, they've overlapped them a bit. So it cuts out as a single piece. And there's some cute things in here that we could use. So we could pick something in here and cut it that way. Or the other thing that we can do is we can come back into the fonts that are on the machine as well and we can write out whatever we want. So you can see I've got lots of choices. I've got kind of block and serif fonts and italicized fonts and ones that look like little kids wrote them. So kind of pick the font that you like. Um, I kind of like this one here. Let's see, what do I like? Let me choose this one, all right? So maybe we're gonna put hello. All right, and so right now it's telling me it's about an inch high and it's six inches wide and that's too wide for my card. So I'm gonna resize it here. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna resize it here. That's too small. That's pretty good, we'll go with that. All right, so it's 0.58 inches tall. I'll set it. You can see it on the map here. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna come back into that same area. Hopefully I'm picking the same font, but no one would be more surprised than me if I didn't. And I'm gonna put spring, if I can remember how to spell it. Okay, same kind of thing. Now remember last time it was 0.58 inches tall, so I wanna adjust this so it's the same height. And also that should get me so it fits on my card as well. All right, set. All right, so I have my two words. And, but I have no idea where that's going to be on my card. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the scan option here. And I'm going to let it take a picture of the card that's on my mat. And it just takes a second. And this is one of the most amazing features on the scan and cut machine i think is that you can use up all your little scraps and and little things um because you can take a picture of what's on your mat so you know exactly where you're putting things so i'm just taking the words now and putting them around the flower on this side of the card in a way that looks good and that looks pretty good to me and so at this point i would say okay i'm done editing my action is going to be draw. All right, and I'm just going to tell it to start. And it'll just take about a minute, and then we'll have a custom card with our own sentiment that we made on the scan and cut. Now I'll have to go back and do this to the little Mickey card. And for people like me who have terrible handwriting, it's really nice to have the machine do all this for me. Because that way you guys can actually read the card when it's done. All right, we're almost done. All right, I'm going to unload the mat. And let's see where we are. So look at that. Took just a couple seconds. And now I have a fully finished greeting card and actually the sentiment on it is legible which it wouldn't be if I had written it pretty fun so what do you guys think about about magnets and uh, greeting cards have any of you done refrigerator magnets on your scan and cut before I have never thought of that you got something to say no, hey, Ruth. hey how are you I just love all this is exciting <laughs> then you can pick it up and watch it again. And if you missed it, there you are. You can see it over and over. Mm -hmm. I have to do that. I, I learned by it. I tell everyone when they get a surgery, thread it 20 times. So thread it. So, and this lady said, my mama never had trouble threading hers after that. <laughs> I have to do repetition to learn. Yeah, me too. yeah, you're doing awesome, Tina. I love it. Good. Thanks. All right. So any questions? Let me just no, tell him one thing. This is our third class with Tina, and we hope to have several more. We're giving you these classes so that when we do class here in the store on the 10 needle, which Tina is going to be here in May, the week before Mother's Day, the 11th, 10th and 11th, doing a two-day 10 needle class. Then she'll be doing two days, the 12th and 13th. 
which she's going to be showing you all kind of stuff to do. And on Saturday, we're giving away a PS 500 worth $999, but you have to be present on the 13th to win it. We're doing the biggest Mother's Day celebration you ever saw. But she'll be here four days. Don't miss it because Tina is absolutely the best. We love her. Yeah. And we're so grateful to have her. And she's excellent. She knows her brother product. She knows her stuff. And we are so excited. Uh, I hope y'all come. Don't miss it. You're too sweet, Ruthie. No, but we love this. You've done all these other classes. I forgot. You're, she's done the um, luminaire, luminaire, the stellar, and the tin needle or the multi needle PR series. And now today, the skin cut. So I'm so excited. So we're going to try to do these often. But the awesome part I absolutely love is you can go to YouTube and watch it over and over. And what other thing did they watch it on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that way we have this there for you with one of the best teachers in the industry. So we couldn't ask for no better. We appreciate you. Tina, I love this. Thank you. You're so welcome. And she has her, her helper today. I do. <laughs> Ruth, my husband is real. Come here. Let me see. No, come on. <laughs> Ruth for years has given me, has told me she's not sure my husband is real. <laughs> He's real. <laughs> now he can travel with you a little bit. Yeah, he's just camera shy. Okay. All right. Show his face on the camera. Everybody won't think. We'll come here. Him. Yeah, we'll come give on. him a surprise. Come on. Come on. Let's do it. Come, come on, on Randy. She calls him. <laughs> We're so glad to see you. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and make a little tote bag now with heat transfer vinyl. Right. You guys are experts on this. Let's pop back over the machine. I'm going to pull that design up again really quickly. But really, we're doing this repetition so you'll remember, right? So we're going to grab our design. All right. Now, we're going to make it out of heat transfer vinyl. But remember when we did the coffee mug, right? We had a yellow vinyl and a black vinyl. So we had to cut the design out twice. It's going to be the same deal for my heat transfer vinyl as well. So right here... If you want, if you already know how many you want when you're at the resizing page, you can actually add that second copy right here um, as opposed to going into the editing. And so there's both of my flowers. I would probably separate them a little bit. I'm going to cut this one out of yellow HTV and this one out of black HTV. Okay. And again, the action we're going to choose is going to be cut because we are cutting it. All right, and we're going to come back into our settings because last time we cut paper, and so we had our half cut turned off, but now we're cutting HTV, which is that two-layer material, so we want half cut back on again, right? Now, one other thing that we need to do before we cut this, this one you can't really tell, but we would want to mirror both of these designs, because we're cutting them upside down, right? So we'll choose the first one here and mirror it. We'll choose the second one here and mirror it, all right? And then basically we would just go ahead and now we can put the cut back in here again. <clears throat> we're gonna confirm our half cut should be on. Yep, half cut's on. And then we would simply start and cut. And look how cute this, this same design is on a little tote bag. Isn't that adorable? Love that. So again, and I'll put all of the projects together at the end so we can kind of see all the flower options with a single design. One other thing I'm going to do before we leave this design, you're probably saying what in the world else could she do with this flower? Um, but I also used the My Connection um, capability, and I actually sent the design from my Scan and Cut to my Luminaire and turned it into an applique and stitches. So I just wanted to show you really quick what that process is. Again, I'll show you the Luminaire and the Scan and Cut together on the webinar in May. But if I wanted to um, use my connection with this design on the home page, I would scroll over here until I got to the My Connection. Okay. Now, the design is, originates on the Scan and Cut, and so I'm sending it from the Scan and Cut to the Luminaire. So I'm going to choose the Send option. And then I would choose the pattern. And just like I've done, seems like many times now, I would come in here and grab the pattern. 
All right, and I want to send one of them over. I think I made it a little bit bigger. That's fine. Now, this, this page looks a little bit different than we've seen in the past because now we have this little gray band down the side. What this is meant to represent now is your embroidery hoop, okay? And so as long as whatever you're sending to the Luminaire or the Stellaire um, will fit on the largest um, Met, or the largest hoop for the machine, as, which means in the white area, not extending into the gray, you would hit the transfer button here and it would send it into your, in my case, into my luminaire and it would be waiting for me in the design center. And then once I'm in the design center, I can do the normal things you do in the design center to turn it into stitches. So let's come back and look and see what it looks like in stitches. So here I basically, um, the yellow is a single piece of fabric. I use that offset uh, technique that I showed you uh, with one of the other projects that I've now promptly forgot. Oh, the magnet. I use the offset. So I put the iron on fusible on the back of my fabric. I cut it out on the standard tack mat, the purple mat, and I used I could I used the rotary blade for that. Okay. I fused it to the fabric. I went into the design center and turned all the black elements into a fill. Okay. And then I send it over to the embroidery side. I use the camera on my embroidery machine to put this, the black stitches exactly where I wanted them on the yellow fabric for the flower. And then I added echo, stip echo stippling to it. So really super easy. And I think about all the fun projects you could make now using the uh, over a thousand designs that are on the scan and cut. So it really gives you a lot of creative opportunities. So let's just look at all these guys together. Let's see, greeting card. We'll look at all, oh, and the magnet too. But look at all the different types of projects that we could make really quickly and really easily with the same design on the scan and cut, but different techniques, right? So don't think that these designs are only good for one technique. You can do all kinds of things with the designs that are on the machine. All righty. All right, Sarah, what do you think? Did I leave anything out? What else could I do with a flower? <laughs> you're muted. Hey, Sarah, you're muted. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I said that's like one design in 50 different ways. Right? <laughs> but that is beautiful. I love that design. Did you etch on the glass? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I, I went to the bathroom. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So see, it's etched on the wine glass. Oh, Hard to see beautiful. Isn't that fun? But I mean, think about all the cool decorative things that you can do, and then, and really easy, right? You just paint that glass etching compound on there for three minutes, and then rinse it off with water. That's awesome. I love it. Me too. I don't <laughs> think you can go anywhere and get all that matching stuff, and then mm -hmm. it's all original. And it yeah, that's, steps. that's definitely true. All right. So if we don't have it, oh, sorry. No, you're good. We have a question I forgot to tell you. Yeah. Um, so it says, can I bring in an embroidery design, applique, and cut my fabric? Like from yes. this? Yes, you can. And I'll show you that in a little bit, in okay. just a little bit. Yep. All right. So next I thought we would talk about cutting out quilt blocks. Ooh. All right. So I'm just going to take one second and sort of clear my table here. Do you have any specials you want to tell them? We just got the biggest special you ever saw. I have a few left of the new Luminaire XP3 that you can stitch out all, all this stuff, and it works wirelessly with your um, scan and cut. I also just got a shipment of PR1055 10 needles that you can flat or take care of business. They sew absolutely excellent. Um, you could do hats, jackets, shirts, shoes, bath mats. It's endless. And the sales are great. Each person's different. There's no two people alike. And you all have different needs. So we, if you, get, if you live near us, and even if you want to come from far up, you're welcome. We will train you one-on-one, -on -one and you'll love the class and how we train you and show you how to use what you buy. We're not just here to sell it and out the door buy. We're here to take care of you after the sale. Also, so um, if you're interested, call me at 850-830-4815. Again, 
830-4815 and let us know what you're interested in. We also have a traded in 10 needle and some other machines, a PR 1050, but you might just want that brand new one with that camera. You can't stand it. And the XP3, oh my gosh, I love the new machine and the colors Projector and the design. And as soon as Sarah saw it, BB said, Mimi, you got to get it. I got it right away. It is absolutely awesome. You'll be so excited. It is a beautiful machine. I know. I love it. All right. We ready? I'm going to, were we ready for cool blocks? Yes. All right. So let's do it. By the way, um, some one of the other categories of patterns that are on the machine are quilt blocks. I believe there are 144 quilt blocks on the machine. Um, you'll see some here and some here. For example, in this category, you've got uh, some sunbonnet blocks and Dresden plates and that kind of stuff. Uh, Hawaiian quilt blocks, which are really popular and beautiful. Those are really fun in here even some birthday banners in here. And then you've got some of the traditional quilt blocks that are in here. I am going to pull up, uh, let's see, which one am I doing? I think I used this one. I'm gonna do PAAO07, a quilt block in here, okay? So basically, if you're doing um, a quilt project and you don't like cutting all your pieces out manually, you can cut them all out with the machine itself. It's easy enough to do. You can make them as any size that you want as long as they will fit on the, the mat itself for cutting. So let's go ahead and pull up this cold block. Now it's coming in at nine inches. Like I said, you can make it any size you want. So minus makes it smaller, plus makes it bigger. I believe I cut mine out at six inches. So I'm just gonna take it down really quickly to six inches. All right. So once you have it sized the way that you want, you'll simply say OK. And you'll notice that it automatically splits out the pieces um, in the different colors of fabric. Now, you, of course, can use whatever colors of fabric that you want. But th then you can start cutting it out, right? So I'm going to start with piece A. That's the squares. So when I select that piece and say OK, it's going to tell me each one is a little over two inches. And I need five of them. Um, per block. And if I wanted to make multiple blocks, right, I would just increase this in increments of five. If I wanted two blocks, for example, I'd take this up to 10. If I wanted three blocks, it would be 15. It's whatever you want to do here. And then we would set. And you can see that they all um, ended up right here on my mat. Now, one of the things that's really important to, to be aware of with, with these particular pieces is, I don't know if you can see here, I'm going to go to edit and turn on the magnifying glass here in a second so you can see a little bit better. Let's go in here. All right, and we can actually even make this a little bit bigger. You can see there's two lines for each piece. So what it's done is it's automatically added a quarter inch seam allowance to all the pieces for me so that um, I don't have to do any kind of crazy math trying to figure out what the finished sizes would be with a seam allowance. So it's easy enough to do on a square. It's a little less easy to do on something like a triangle, right? So it's really nice that the machine does all that kind of heavy duty math calculations for me. Now, when we were ready to cut this, um, basically I would scan my mat. I typically have a 12 by 12 inch piece of fabric on the mat. So I would have more pieces. I would fill up this entire piece uh, this entire mat with pieces. And when you're looking to arrange them on the mat, this icon here um, lets you put the pieces on the mat in different um, different arrangements. And you can find the one where you get the most pieces with the least amount of fabric. And so that's typically what I do. So you can arrange them on here to, to um, make good use of your fabric. And then of course, when it's time to cut, what you'll be doing is you'll come here to the selections and you'll cut. Now, one thing to know, um, if you're a person, I did not draw seam allowances on my pieces, but if you if you maybe don't have a quarter inch foot and maybe aren't a great quarter inch seamer, you can actually run the mat through the first time with draw um, as your action and have the little pen in the pen in the tool holder, and it will draw your your seam lines on the pieces for you. And then you basically run the mat through a second time, and that time you choose the action of cut and it cuts out the pieces, okay? So um, you can do that. If you're gonna do both draw and cut, I would always do the draw first because the pieces are, um, 
adhered well to the mat. After you cut them, sometimes they've they've loosened up a little bit on the mat and they may shift a little bit and you want your lines to be exactly where you want them. So when it's time to cut, it would be coming in here. Now remember fabric is a single layer material. So under settings for cutting, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your half cut is turned off, right? You wanna go all the way through those pieces of fabric. And then basically you put the mat on the machine and you're ready to cut your fabrics, all right? And so you come out of here and hit start. Okay, now I've already pre-cut some of these, so let's go ahead and look at what they look like, and we'll talk about the mat and the blade combinations. So um, first of all, a couple of things. For quilt blocks, typically, you are not going to want an iron-on fusible on the back of your pieces, right? That would be really stiff, and your quilt would have a really heavy hand. Um, but you cannot put bare fabric right on the mat because fabric stretches across the bias. And so what will happen as the blade is running across bare fabric it'll get caught in certain areas with the stretch and it'll basically lift it right off the mat okay so you're going to want to prepare your fabric in advance um, with spray starch i like the one that ruth carries in her store terial magic um, here's an example of a piece of fabric that's been treated with it i don't know if you can tell but it's it's stiff it's almost like a piece of paper so what i do is i saturate the fabric really well um, with a starch and then I either iron it dry or I put it between two pieces of parchment paper and stick it in my um, heat press for about 20 seconds at 320 and then it's nice and stiff and now it's not going to stretch across the bias and it's really good to put on the mat just like that. When you come to your blade options when you're cutting fabric the the two best options would be either the thin fabric auto blade this blade was specifically designed to cut fabric and the, the angle of the blade itself is optimized for cutting fabric. But quilt blocks are pretty simple and so the rotary cutter works really well um, cutting fabric as well. So these would be the two blade options I would recommend and I would say to use the fabric mat. I've tried it on the standard mat um, and you can get away with it sometimes but you have to be much more vigilant about whether your fabric is shifting on the mat. The fabric mat has the strongest tack of any of the mats and is specifically made for that. And so I'm going to take this little cover sheet off. Oh. But you can see my pieces have been cut basically and I just can pull away the excess. And what's really nice about the pieces is not only do you get the piece cut, but see how it has the little um, dog ears on the corner so it matches up perfectly when you're seaming as well. It makes that part really easy. Um, so again, it's just lifting off nice and easy here. Now, when we get down to the rest of it, um, you have two choices when you're taking the, the quilt pieces off the mat, right? One way is you can kind of get your spatula tool, your fingernail, and you can try and pick up one of those edges and then pull it off, right? What I find happens when I do that is one of two things. I get a little shredding around my edges sometimes and also once I pull the piece off the mat it's curled all up and it's not flat anymore so what I've just started doing instead is I turn my mat upside down and then I get a little corner like this and hold it and I pull my mat away from the fabric and then you'll see I don't have any kind of shredding of my edges and I also don't have any curling of my pieces all right so I would definitely recommend pulling the mat away from the fabric instead of the fabric away from the mat to keep everything nice um, and straight and flat. And then you can see here, I basically just chain pieced all the little pieces together. And when you're done, you have a completed quilt block. And look how perfect that is, right? I mean, I could have never pulled that off if I had to hand cut it. So it's a really nice utility. And um, I have a friend of mine who made a bunch of doll quilts and she made her blocks like one and two inches big which I could never do manually and cut them all out on the scan and cut. And it was, it was amazing. I'm not sure I have the patience for that, but it was a pretty amazing project. All right, Sarah, we normally have some questions about cutting fabric. Did we have any questions come up during this segment? Not. Um, check. Does anybody have any questions? So, which one do you prefer? And I have another question for you. Does the machine automatically know when you put the rotary blade in? Yes. It, it, does. Knows, 
Yeah, it knows what's what tool is in the holder when you put it in there, so you don't have to tell it that as long as you've gone in and you know set it up for the rotary kit when you first get it. Yep. Okay. And Miss Roberta said, "Did you iron on something to the back of your fabric?" Nope. Let me show you. Uh, no, it's it's really it's naked fabric. The only thing I did was I starched it up really good with Terio Magic and then pressed it dry. And now it's really stiff like paper. And then I can stick it directly to the mat and then cut it. So our next question, is there any problem with sewing the blocks with the starch on it? No. In fact, um, I actually prefer um, sewing my blocks together with the pieces starched. Same kind of thing, especially with these triangle pieces, right? Um, as I'm as I'm putting two of these little triangles together and sewing here, I'm actually sewing across the bias. And so if it hasn't been starched, it has, it has the ability to stretch a little bit as I'm seaming it and I don't get as clean of edges on either side. Once it's starched, it's really nice and stiff. There's no stretch across the bias while I'm stitching it either. So I really prefer having my pieces starched when I'm assembling it. Of course, the first time you run it through the wash, all the starch comes out and you have a nice soft quilt. Awesome. Miss Roberta said thank you. You're welcome. All righty, that's all the questions we have for right now. All right, so let's talk about some applique. I know that was a question we had just a minute ago, and we're talking about cutting fabric anyway. So let's talk about some things with, with applique. Sorry, I'm going to clear my slate here a little bit. So first of all, um, just to make sure that everyone is aware you can actually add cut data to an applique embroidery file on your embroidery machine. If you're not familiar with that, basically on your embroidery machine, when you pull up that applique file, you go to the icon where you can change thread colors and you figure out which one of the stitch elements is the placement line. And then you toggle over to the thread palette. You know, they have Floriani in there and Isocord and some Madeira is in there. You're going to use the arrows all the way over until you get to the one that's just called embroidery. And then if you'll scroll right down to the bottom of that thread palette, the last three characters are specifically for applique. One has scissors. The next one, the one in the middle looks like it's a, a like a tack down line. And the third one looks like the finish line. Okay. So you're going to assign the thread color with scissors on it to the placement line. And then you can carry your PES file from your embroidery machine, put it on the scan and cut and the scan and cut recognizes that thread color as a cut line and it will cut that, that applique out for you. Okay. Then that's really handy. If you have some older applique files, you know, that came out before we all had cutting machines and they didn't have any cut data in it. And if you don't really like doing fussy cutting in the hoop, which I personally don't like very much at all. Um, so you can add cut, cut data if you would on the fly right on the machine. Okay. All right, so let's pop over the machine. I got a couple of things I want to show you. <clears throat> so first of all, I have a couple of PES files that we're going to go. They're on a USB, so we're going to go to retrieve data. And we're going to point to the USB file here. And we've got several different files here. Those of you who have the Scan and Cut playbook will probably recognize um, these files as being part of that Scan and Cut playbook. But for example, this little teacup pattern here is an applique pattern. Um, if I And basically, you have two options when you bring this up. This one says basically there's not cut data included, and it will try and figure out what you want it to cut from based on the stitch files. This one says there is um, cut data in it. When I come here, this one didn't have cut data in it, so it says it can't confirm the cutting line. So then I could come in here to the icon that looks like a daisy. If you're, of course, if you're going to resize your applique, you want the cut, you want the stitch file and the cut file to be the same size. So if you make a change here, make sure you make a change to the embroidery uh, design size as well. And then it basically is going through and it's trying, it's offering me choices for what I want to cut. So this one is going to cut the outline of the cup, the outline of the rick rack and the smoke. So all the different elements, it's going to cut all of it out. That's probably not what I want because then I'd have to layer in a, a small piece of fabric in here. The second one is basically giving me the outside edge of the full design, right? And so 
the smoke is included, but where this one doesn't really work so well for me is it doesn't have that center of the little handle showing. So it wouldn't be the worst choice for me, but it's not the best either because it, it, does, it doesn't have that. And then this one is all the stitch data. It would be a terrible choice for cutting because the blade would be basically emulating the needle and stitching and it basically shred the fabric right on my mat, okay? So if, if this was where, what I had to work with, I would probably in this case go with the middle and then fussy cut out the center of the little saucer. But again, not bad given that there's no cut data at all in this file that it's able to do it to this degree, okay? Now let's come back in and pull up another file from that same flash drive. And this one actually assign that special color that we talked about um, a minute ago that has the applique data in it, if I'm pulling up the right one. All right, so same file, looks the same. This time though, when I go here, because we had changed the thread color for the placement line to that special embroidery thread palette at the bottom, that color that has the scissors on it, it reads now the placement line as my cut line and it's ready to, to cut my fabric, right? So I could just bring this in directly for my mat. Now, on this particular page, right, if I were gonna do multiples, I could certainly do that. But I also have this option here, the offset, because I'm sure some of you besides me have had the experience where you get an applique file from someone and you think it's gonna be great, and then for whatever reason, the satin stitches don't fully capture the fabric, right? And it's really kind of annoying. And the way you can adjust your cut file for that is come in here and you can add an offset. Basically, it's gonna bump out the piece of fabric a little bit bigger than the information that they gave you. And a brother, based on looking at lots of files, we recommend that when you're using the offset, you either do one click, which is 0.04, or two, which is 0.08, and not go much beyond that because then you'll end up having fabric that extends out beyond your satin stitches, and we don't like to have to clean that up either, all right? But that's how you can add a little bit more um, fabric to that. And then basically you set, same as last time when we're cutting out the fabric, right? We're gonna go into, we're gonna choose cut, we're going to want to cut all the way through the fabric. So under settings, we're going to make sure that our half cut is turned off because we want to go all the way through. And then we're ready to go ahead and cut out our pattern on the mat. Now, let's talk about kind of what we would use for this for just a second. So um, when you're cutting out applique fabric, I'm not sure about everyone, I normally put an iron-on fusible on the back of my fabric pieces because if you don't, after you've washed the garment two or three times, the, the fabric around the edges tends to kind of break down a little bit and it, it can uh, loosen up from the stitches and it just doesn't look as good. It doesn't lay nice and flat. It kind of bunches up in the middle. So I typically pre-treat my um, applique fabric I put an iron-on fusible on the back. I don't know if you can see that here. Um, my favorite is the one that Ruth carries. Um, it works really, really well. So I iron that onto the back of my fabric. Then I remove the release paper, okay? And then I put the adhesive, the iron-on fusible, directly on the tack of my mat. I do use my standard mat, so that's the one with the purple on the bottom. And again, you have choices. Because I have the iron-on fusible, I tend to not, I could use my fabric blade. I just tend not to because I don't need to. I save that for when I really need it. I typically either use my rotary blade or my standard auto blade to cut that out. And you get really, really clean um, cuts. Uh, this particular design originated on the Luminaire. It's an embroidery file that, again, I use that My Connection feature and turned it into an applique. And you can see here, once I cut out the butterfly wings, they lay in there perfectly. They're secured then with a little zigzag stitch at the, at the bottom. And if I kept going on that and finished the design, I'd have a complete, this one I also add a little bit of mylar because, you know, who doesn't like a little bling? Um, but everything fits perfectly. And this that took this design from about a 96 minute stitch out down to something that was closer to like 45 minutes by eliminating all those fill stitches and turning it into applique. So really pretty easy to do. Um, now, uh, Sarah, I know we had a couple questions on applique. Um, have I answered the questions that we did have on the applique technique or are there any additional applique questions? 
I think Sarah may have left the building for a minute. All right. If you guys do have applique questions, um, put them in the comments. And when she comes back in, we'll address those. All right. And in the meantime, we're going to do a little bit of fussy cutting. All right. So give me one second here and then we'll start our fussy cutting. All right. So let's come over here first. So you can do fussy cutting with fabric or with things like sticker sheets. Either one will work fine. I thought we'd use some stickers today. Stickers are super popular um, right now. And uh, when you buy sticker sheets online, it's interesting. Not very many of them actually include the cut files, right? So here's an example. You've got a couple flowers here. I just basically printed um, the sticker sheet on sticker paper. So it's a two layer paper, right? It's got the release paper here and it's sticky on the back. I just ran it through my normal inkjet printer and printed the stickers here. And now what I want to do is cut around the outlines of the flowers, kind of like the, what I did to do these couple stickers here, right? So I don't want to have to do all that by hand. So to get started, again, I'm using my low tack mat. Excuse this noise. It's a wee bit obnoxious. And then I'm going to take my sticker paper and I'm going to affix the backside directly to my mat. Especially with the low tack mat, I always use the brayer. Just make sure that I get a really um, good stick there. And then for my blade, I'm actually going to use the standard auto blade in the machine. Okay. So I'm just putting that blade holder in right now. And then I'm going to load the mat and we're going to use the fussy cutting feature over here. So this is a really cool feature. Um, you know, here I'm cutting out stickers, but sometimes you're working on a project and maybe you have a really cute fabric and it's got a little design motif in there that you want to isolate and basically cut it out and maybe iron it on as part of your design. It works the same way. Of course, if you had fabric, right, you probably want the iron on fusible on the back of the fabric. And instead of the low tack mat, you'd be using that standard tack mat that we just talked about a second ago for applique. All right, so to do fussy cutting here on the home screen, we're going to choose the scan option. When we do that, we have some options here. We have scan to USB. In other words, once I figure out the cut file, it's going to save it off to a flash drive. Here, I'm just going to create the data today, but I'm not going to cut it today. Typically, when I'm doing this, I go direct cut. I want to figure out the cut file, and I want to go ahead and cut it out while I'm here today. So I almost always choose this option here. Then it's saying, do I want to convert the scanned image to cutting data on my computer or on the machine? I have either choice, but I want to do it right here on the machine itself. So we'll choose that. And then I have options for either black and white or color, and I can change that right here with settings. And you're going to, depending on what you're working on, you may want to experiment with both the black and white and the color um, data capture, depending on what your fabric or your, your um, project is. One typically works better than the other. I'm going to try black and white first here. So now we're going to scan what's on my mat. It's telling me that my scanner lever is set too high. So I'm just going to, sorry, I think you're going to have to adjust your screen. All right. So then I just lower the scanner lever and we're going to start. I was doing felt a little while ago. So. <clears throat> All right, so you can see both of my flowers here. That's what I expected, so I can say okay. Now, it's trying to figure out what I want it to cut, right? And so you can see I have a lot of junk showing up on my mat, score lines on my mat, some lands, all kinds of things that I'm not really interested in. So let's say I'm going to cut out the little poppy first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and use my arrows, and I'm going to try and crop out everything except my little poppy here. All right, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to come in here and isolate that as well. And that just makes my life easier at the next step. So that's pretty good. I still have a little bit of junk down here. So I can try and raise this one up a little bit. And if you're having trouble seeing, remember your magnifying glass is your friend here. Uh, so you can make it bigger. I don't 
I still have a little bit of junk in here. I'm going to move this over just a little bit more. All right. And then the way I can get rid of some of the extra stuff in here is I can go to ignore object size. And then I'm just going to increase this. Probably not that much. I'm going to go to here and go back. And that looks like I got rid of most of the extraneous stuff that I'm not worried about right now. So I'm going to say, OK, we'll let it process. And see how it created a cut file around my flower. All right. So let's go in here for a second. And let's see. There may be one extra little guy here. So let me see if I can get him. No, I guess it's all together. So I'm good. Now, when I go to cut it, if I want it to be right on the edge of my flower, I would leave it like this. I typically like to use the offset and create that little buffer especially if I have a sticker that maybe has a thin black outline around the edge. That way I don't have to worry about if it cuts into that outline a little bit. So I use the offset quite a bit when I'm doing stickers. And you can just put it in whatever amount you want. I'm going to go ahead and use 0.04. That looks great. I well, Let's see. No, I actually like that one better. All right. And so I'm good. I'm done with my editing now. I'll say OK. Now that's the cut file that I have. I don't have to rescan. It's right on top of my sticker paper here. So we'll go in and tell the machine what to do. We want to cut. And remember, sticker paper is another two layer material. And my half cut is off. So I have to go into settings. I'm going to go to the next page here. I'm going to turn half cut back on. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on auto. Now I haven't done a test for you today while we've been doing this. So let's go ahead and do a test cut just so you can see that whole process. Um, let's say that I've never cut the sticker paper before and I have no idea. So I'll go to test. It's going to give me a shape. Now I don't have any material down here. So I'm going to want to move this up here. So it's on the paper, but outside of what I'm going to cut here. All right. And then we'll go ahead and start and it'll just take a few seconds and it'll run it through. It'll cut out a little circle for me and then I'll, I'll make sure I get a clean cut. All right, so I got a clean cut. You'll see that in a minute. And so I'm ready to go. So clean cut in this case means it cut through the sticker paper, but it didn't cut through the backing sheet. And so now I'll just hit the start button and we'll let it cut out this little sticker. And again, very similar process if you're trying to cut a motif out of um, fabric. The, the scanning and the, how you clean up the image is very similar to what I just did. You'll just prepare your materials differently. You'll have that iron-on fusible on the back, and you'll have the standard tack mat. All right, so moment of truth. We're all done cutting, so let's come back to the overhead here. So, again... This is what a clean test cut looks like. I have really sharp edges. It did not cut through my backing paper. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and lift this up and off the mat. And then here's my little flower sticker. And look how fun is that. Super quick, super easy. Um, so if you guys are interested in making stickers, you know, the planner stickers are really popular right now. Those are super easy to do. Um, just do the fussy cutting and you can cut those out. So, Miss Sarah, are you back with us? Not yet. All right. So, again, if you have questions on fussy cutting, if you'll try and remember those, and when Sarah comes back, we'll get those taken care of. So now I thought maybe we would talk a little bit about the new application that's called Artsphera. And so I'm not sure if you guys are all familiar with it, but I'm going to start with my phone here. It's a completely free app. You can download it from either the Google or the Apple Play Store. It's called Artspira. I don't know if you can see that, but it's art, the word art with S-P-I-R-A behind it. You download it on your phone. When you open it up, we refresh the content. I think it's every, every week or two. They're getting more and more frequent, the updates. But once it launches, you'll see what you have here. Um, you have free designs, both for your embroidery machine and for your cutting machine. You have a magazine that has project IT ideas with complete instructions for how to do the projects, um, which is really nice. You can also come in here and do uh, 
you can draw on your phone and turn that into st stitches or something else on here as well. So that's kind of fun. I can't draw, so I typically don't do that one. I try and stay in my safety lane here in the home. But on the cutting designs as an example, let's come in here. The, so the, the current ones are going to be right down here. So these are the ones that were released this week. But let's say none of those are really speaking to me and what I the project I want to do right now. So I'm just going to come in instead to go to cutting designs up here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll, you have different categories, right? So this is seasons and you can see, and again, these are completely free. So this is like a bunch of extra free files for you. You have things for spring. And again, it keeps going. You've got animals in here, flowers, which is nice for spring. Um, all kinds of things. We'll just keep going over here. We've got food and drink, vegetables, parties and occasions, holidays, nature, tools. So you got all kinds of different options in here. Let's say that I want to go ahead and I want to do something in lettering. I want to make a t-shirt that has something fun on it. It's a little hard probably for you guys to see the ones down here because it's just a gray outline on the letters. But let's go ahead and say we're going to make this Maker's Going to Make shirt, okay? So I'll just simply click on the design here. I'll say I want to create it. It shows me the design loaded on a mat. Now, you do have to register this with your Scan and Cut. You do that through the Canvas Workspace program, which is another free software program we'll talk about in a minute. When I'm ready to go, I'm just going to say Transfer, okay? It's just telling me that it's going to overwrite whatever else is in my temporary folder. So now my data transfer is complete, okay? So now we're gonna pop back over to the scan and cut and see where I find that. So we're gonna go to retrieve data. We're gonna go to the cloud because the Artsphera is a cloud-based app, all right? And it's gonna pull up and sure enough, there's my makers gonna make right here. So I'm good to go. Now, one thing about this, I decided that I was going to make my, my T-shirt out of heat transfer vinyl. And so because these are letters, we all know that we have to group this, right? So I'm going to come in here to edit. I'm going to select everything, right? So that's the whole design. And I go to object edit. And remember, because I'm cutting it upside down, I have to mirror the whole design, all right? So now I would simply put my heat transfer vinyl on the mat. And remember, we're going to be using that standard purple mat, our standard auto blade, and we're putting our vinyl on the mat with the pretty side down. So the ugly side's up. And then once it cuts, we have our cool little maker's going to make t-shirt, right? This is a holographic black vinyl. It's super shiny under the light, but it's really cool. And I just use different colors of glitter vinyl to kind of make it a little bit more fun. But again, a completely free project pulled right out of the Art Spirit app. I made another one for you guys too. Um, I went into the party and occasion um, category, and here's a cute little gift box that you can make. And it cuts out in just a couple of minutes. Super easy to do. Just pulled some glittery ribbon through it. But there's so many cute projects that are out there in our sphere. And again, what's really awesome is all that content is, is available to you for free. And the one thing I didn't show you on the phone, let me go back into it really quick. All right, we're done. Yeah, we're done here. But on that magazine, you know, the, it's a great resource. I'm going to come back to home. Even if you don't like the project that they made with a design, or let's say you come into this magazine, right? So you got all these cool projects that are in here and you're like, oh, I got to make a tote bag and that's super cute. I don't want to use that design, but I've never made a tote bag before. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Click on it because you get to see the finished project. This will be a video that's up on uh, three minutes or less long of somebody making it from start to finish. So it's fast forwarded. They walk you through all the materials that you need and then they take you step by step through how to make the tote bag and how to do the embroidery or whatever the technique is. And so if you're trying to do something for the first time and you don't want to have to search around trying to find instructions, find something similar on Artspira and you've basically got a free tutorial on your phone, right? So I, I love this app. I, I have used it so much. I really, really um, enjoy it. I like both the free content and the instructions for things that I've never really done before. So it's, it's one of my favorites. And I hope you guys, if you haven't used it, you'll download it. 
and start using it. I think you'll be surprised how much fun it is. And there's lots of new things that are coming. They've got a whole really, um, really exciting plan for Artspira, you know, bigger and more complicated projects and all kinds of things are in the wings. So definitely give it a try. All right, Sarah, are you back with us? Yes, ma'am. I was back. I don't know why I tried to say, hey, Tina, and it just didn't pop up, but I'm back. <laughs> All right. All righty. So we got some comments. Um, so Miss Kathy said, so did I hear you say there is a special fabric blade? Yes, ma'am. There is a thin fabric auto blade. It's got a gold cap. Um, if you got the 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 SDX 325 model, the thin fabric blade and the mat were in the box. If not, they're both optional accessories. You're muted. I'm so sorry. No worries. Um, Miss Sissy Hawkins said lots of info to digest. Definitely <laughs> rewatching. Yeah, drinking out of a fire hose, right? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Libby Hoffman says hello from Slidell. Um, Louisiana. And then Miss Diane says, name of the app again. Yes, it's Art Spira. So Art, A R T S P I R A. Okay. And no questions on applique? Would these blades work with the Anovis? Uh, I'm not typically the Anovis machines are embroidery machines. Can What specific machine are you thinking of, Roberta? Miss Bev says she needs a scan and cut now. You need we two of them, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we can hook you up. She said the scan and cut. Oh, got it. Um, so the rotary blade is backwards compatible with all the DX machines. So that would be the 225, the 230, the 325, and the 330, not for the ones before. And I think the same thing is true with a fabric blade, I want to say. Get me, Sarah, if I got that wrong. <laughs> Miss Brenda says, I need to use my scan and cut more. You know, honestly, it's once you start using it, if you'll just use it two or three times, then you're like, oh, my gosh, I could do this or I could do that or I could do this or I could do that. And then it's then then you can't stop. <laughs> hey, I want to see you take that same design and do it in rhinestones using the rhinestone kit. Right. Wouldn't that be fun? Another idea. That'd be super fun. I don't know if I could handle all that bling at one time, though. <laughs> you never know. All right. It doesn't look like we have any more comments. Okay. Well, we just have a few minutes. I did want to spend a little bit of time showing you guys the free software program that you can use with your scan and cut. So I'm going to pop over my computer real quick here. Miss Roberta uh, said, I plan on using the scan and cut with making stickers to put on my luggage when I fly. Isn't that the truth? You can also, they make this stuff called window cling. You can put stuff on your windows. I mean, once you get started, it's, it's really the hard part of stopping. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is a free program from Brother. It's called Canvas uh, Workspace, um, and you can download it online. Um, it, has, it has some additional editing features that are not on the Scan and Cut machine itself, and some things are just easier to do in the app than they are to do um, on the machines. So I just wanted to cover a few things for you in here. Um, I know the banner at the top, you can't see my whole screen, but um, a few things. This On the left-hand side, there's an icon that looks like a spiral-bound book. When you click on there, there are hundreds of free projects that you've got access to with the free software as well. So Brother's all about giving you guys cool free stuff to play with with your machines. Um, so you can, you know, scroll through the list if you want to. You can also go in and search. Maybe you wanted something for Easter. Um, you can do a search in there and it'll, you know, pop up the things that are Easter related if I actually hit the enter key. So it searches. So different ways to do it. And of course, just like I showed you when we use the flower design to take one design and use it on a whole bunch of different projects, you might love the design, but not want to do the specific thing that they have here. No worries. You can still 
um, do the project, right? So if we pop in here to this cute little cake topper, maybe you don't want to make a cake topper. Maybe you wanted to make an Easter t-shirt for yourself. No problem. When I click on the icon here, it'll actually load the cut file onto the cutting mat for me, right? So you don't even have to figure that out. Just click on the picture and it shows up on your mat. If you don't know exactly how to make the project, click here and you can read a PDF instruction sheet. It tells you everything that you need and how to do it. If you're like me and you don't feel like you have time to read it, just go over here and watch the video and watch somebody else make it, right? So um, lots of easy, fun things in here. I know Ruth has at the store additional pattern collections that you can buy. Um, once you buy those and activate them, they'll show up here in the middle and then the Disney ones work the same way here, okay? But really, if you haven't used these projects, I can't recommend them strongly enough. They're really cute and oh my gosh, they're free, which is amazing, right? So, so definitely don't forget that. And then a few other things, you know, these are some of the things that are, that you sometimes need to do to modify a design and not everybody is familiar with them. So I wanted to walk you through a couple examples here. So let's say that I'm trying to do something with these two arrows and I don't want this box to cut out in the middle, those types of things, right? I can basically come in here and use and click, uh, whoops, I don't want to select the heart. I'm going to select these two and then I can go to edit. Okay, and under here, I've got all kinds of options. You can see cropping, duplicating, pasting, all that kind of stuff. I want to go to process overlap, and I just want it to be a single shape, right? So in that case, I would pop over here to weld, and look at that. The little box in the middle is all gone, okay? So it's nice to know that you can do that here. Let's say in this time, I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go back to that same process overlap. This time I want to divide, right? I really just want all the little pieces. So now I have this piece and I have that piece and I have, because I didn't have them synced up, I have that weird little piece here, but you get the gist of that. So it's fun that you can take simple things in here and do some cool things. And now let's look at the hearts, right? I have a small heart on top of a big heart. So let's select those two. Let's go back in here again, because this one um, people get confused about a little bit. So the last two, remove overlap, and subtract, all right? So if I do remove overlap and come out, then basically the little heart was on top. So now I have the little heart as a separate piece and then I have a heart with a heart-shaped hole in the middle, right? But now let's do the other one. I'm gonna go back to my starting point, hopefully. And this time we're gonna choose subtract. And so when I subtract, I just get the heart with a hole. I don't get the little separate little heart too, right? So you can do a lot of really powerful things with those simple editing tools. And I just wanted you guys to generally be familiar with them and see some examples of how they work, okay? Now, in addition to the projects tab here, the next one down, there's a circle and a triangle. You can access a lot of the, the basic shapes that are on the machine. So you can bring them in over here and edit them here and then send them out to your scan and cut. Um, if you have any of the, the uh, optional accessory kits, right? Like, so, you know, I have several. So here's my vinyl auto blade. It came with designs. They'll show up here for me. I can do things there or the paper piercing kit I have or the roll feeder. I have a lot of things in here, don't I? I haven't used all these. I got to get busy doing this myself. But you can access all the, that, the additional kit information in here as well. So that's nice to know. Um, while we're on here, I don't know how many of you have the vinyl auto blade, but there's a really cool feature that you get with it. So let's say I bring in this whale design and maybe I want to make it bigger, right? There's a feature here called tiling. And so I could actually come in here and I could say, maybe I want it to be, uh, I don't even know, ledger size, which is bigger than my mat. All right. And it will basically, I can add a weeding box around the pieces. This is actually showing it to me on a bigger mat. Sorry, I need to pick a bigger example. Let's come back in here. I'm going to come in here and we're going to say custom size and we're going to make it 25 by 25. All right, so now when we go here to premium tiling, it's going to basically break it up into smaller pieces. And so I can have a 25 by 25 inch um, cut file. It'll cut it out as four separate cuts. And so that's really cool if you're trying to make big wall murals. So that's something else that's 
specific to that particular um, kit. A couple other things that are really powerful. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always finding something super cute on the internet that I wish I had as a cut file. So there's an image trace function in the software. So just click the little thing here and go to your computer. And this is a, a JPEG, what is it? it's a PNG file. So I'll click it. So it's not a cut file for me, but it's bringing it in here. And it shows it to me here on the mat. And I have two options in here. You'll notice here, this is trace outer edge only. So like, for example, it doesn't trace the inside of my O, doesn't trace the inside of my B. That's probably not the one I want. I'll just use the arrow here and I'll go trace areas by color. And that'll capture those inside lines as well as my outside lines. Now I've traced it. It's on my mat. It's a cut file. It's ready for me to send over and cut out out of vinyl, whatever I want to do. So that's a really fun feature in here as well. If you haven't used it before, it works really, really well. Um, the other thing, I'm not sure, not to geek out on you guys, but the native format for the scan and cut is called FCM. It stands for Fabric Cutting Machine. Both this software and the scan and cut will also read SVG files. So if you have an SVG file here on the software, you just kind of come in here. This is an SVG file here. It'll come in. Right. And then I can go ahead and use it. Now, you'll notice this one wasn't grouped, right, which might be kind of a bummer for me if I were trying to do a T-shirt and maybe I wanted to change colors. So I might want to come in here to layer and group it. And therefore, at that point, instead of having a bunch of little things, I, I just have one thing and then I can do whatever I want to it. Right. I can make it bigger, smaller. I can mirror image it. I can do any of those things here. And then, you know, Sarah brought up the rhinestone kit a minute ago. So I also have that. I'm just going to go back to the standard mat size. Um, because I have the rhinestone kit, I have the ability, first of all, it comes with designs. So when you get the rhinestone kit, you get this design set as well, which is super fun, right? There's also uh, an optional uh, rhinestone pattern kit you can get. But the other thing that you get that's really fun is I can come in here to my shape, so I'm going to come back up here, and I can make my own rhinestone designs, okay? So I'm going to come in here. I was playing with this last night. I have to find my, hmm, well, we'll do, it doesn't really matter. We'll do this guy, all right? So I'll bring him in. We'll make him a little bit bigger. Now, right now, there's no rhinestones, but this little icon on the right-hand side that looks like a circle made out of circles is my rhinestone tab, and the reason I don't see rhinestones is right now it says none. But look at my choices. I can just do the edges. Now I have those rhinestones. I can space the stones a little further apart if I want. So that makes it easier for me to cut. I could come in here and fill it with a grid pattern. If I don't like that, I can come in here and fill it with contour pattern. If I don't like the hybrid pattern. So it's really, really easy to come in here and make rhinestone designs for you guys. I'm going to show you a couple of the, um, no, the example I'm going to show you don't include real rhinestones. I've actually used holographic HTV to create them, um, but they're pretty fun. So let's see. Uh, okay. So this is actually one of the designs that's in, um, it's in that optional rhinestone kit that you can get to go with a machine. And I've cut two colors of HTV, so the blue and the green. And then all the sparkly bits, they're completely flat and smooth to the touch because I cut them out of holographic vinyl. And yet, look how much bling they have when they're in the light, right? It's just amazing. Cuts out really, really simply. Um, they're easy to apply. And if you're making things for, like, little kids, real rhinestones typically aren't considered safe for them because they could pick them off and they could be a choking hazard. But these holographic rhinestones are really safe. Plus, when you throw it in the washing machine and dryer, these won't snag on anything else that's in the washing machine. So I, Sarah knows, I must have a thousand samples that have these faux, faux rhinestones on them because they're just so fun and easy to do. All right, Miss Sarah, do we have any Canvas workspace questions? All righty. So, um... Miss Bonnie said, do you have to have your luminaire with you when you set up Artspira? And is there videos on how to set up with all your machines? Excuse me while I go to the floor and pick something up. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> all right. Um, 
you basically you'll set it up in the canvas workspace uh you can do your scan and cut and your luminaire at two different times so you don't have to do them at the exact same time so you could do like scan and cut today and maybe you're not going to do your your luminaire till tomorrow or whatever do that separately um you there is a process when you go to the settings on your luminaire um, towards one of the later pages there's a little thing at the bottom left that says app guide if you push that It'll bring up the QR code that'll take you directly to the download spot for Artspira. And it'll, on your phone, it'll walk you through how you have to get a number, a pin number that you put in your Luminaire. So it's it's pretty easy, easy to do. Don't worry about it. It's, it's quick and easy. Good. Miss Pam said, I'm so glad I can go back and rewatch this as much as I want. <laughs> uh, I know. I, I like, I'm all worn out from doing this already. <laughs> Hey, I started trying to learn how to crochet. And let me just tell you, I'm so thankful for YouTube and Facebook videos and all that stuff where I can. Oh, wait, I missed that. Let me go back. <laughs> um, and then Miss Brenda said a wall mural would be nice. Yeah, and you would definitely, the vinyl auto blade and that tiling feature lets you go really, really big. Or your alternative is to use the roll feeder, which then you could do 12 inches wide by six feet as well. Does anybody have any more questions? I got a, I got a few. I have a few more samples we can talk about too. One's funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is one of the Disney designs that's on the machine. Isn't that beautiful? Um, P is for princess. I love that design. I put on a little garden flag. I think it's really cute. But lest you guys think I never make mistakes when I'm making projects, the first time I cut out the file, I wasn't paying attention and I didn't mirror image it. And so it was backwards, but wait, look what I did. This is kind of fun. So this is, I basically fused the, this is organza, right? So I took my backwards design and fused it to my organza and then I flipped it over. So it was right side up and I put batting and fabric behind it and then put stipple stitches over it. And I'm going to turn it into a pillow or something. So if you ever, cause this one takes like half an hour to cut. If you ever do something like that, Remember, organza can be your friend because it can make your backward design right side. <laughs> Here's another de little design that's on the machine, Mickey Mouse. Again, super easy to layer it. And you really don't appreciate how beautiful these Disney designs are until you start using them. They're just amazing. It looks like something I could have bought at the park. Here's a couple more designs that are on the machine. I made a little apron. And so you got his little his little Mickey pants by the pocket and his little hands up there. Super cute. And then I don't know about you guys, but if you ever go to a, a concert or a sporting event these days, you have to put all your stuff in one of these little see-through containers. And so this is a great application for that permanent adhesive vinyl and just put it on there with a the transfer tape. And then you are ready to go to the, the stadium or the concert. We do have a couple questions if you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to. Okay. First one, Miss Sissy Hawkins. So using the holographic, it would be a layer applied with transfer tape? No, the holographic here. I'll actually show you a piece of it. Mm. Okay. So the. Hold Oops. on. Sorry. I was trying to get it to you. Oh, no problem. So this is holographic HTV. This is the transfer tape. And so I would put it on the mat like this. It would cut out all the little pieces. And then when I went to weed it, I'm trying to see if I can set, I have no fingernails. Um, but when I go to weed it, basically the shiny layer, the parts that aren't the circles stays on that tape part. And then I pull the rest of this stuff away. Can you see that? Yep. So it works just like any other kind of HTV. It's just a specialty kind because it has that extra like sparkly um, aspect to it. All right, next one. So Miss Pam Wade says, how do you keep your vinyl from shrinking when layering? I haven't had that issue. Basically when you, the bottom layer, so the, the ones that are on the bottom, you're just gonna, 
press them long enough to activate the adhesive. So typically it's five to 10 seconds. It's not enough for a permanent fuse. And then you layer the next one on five to 10 seconds, five to 10 seconds. When you get the final layer on, you're gonna cover the whole thing either with transfer tape or parchment paper and then fuse it for the full time that's recommended by the product. All righty. Next one, Ms. Gail Bruton. Hey, I just bought the SDX 330. There is three different codes on the card that was inside the scanning cup box. I used the top one. What am I supposed to do with the other two? Gail, it's been so long since I had that card. I don't even remember it. So um, hopefully it has something on it with some instructions. I, I thought my recollection was you had a card for the rotary blade kit and you had a card for the My Connection feature. And the third one, I don't remember at all. It's like to register it or something like that. Yeah. She's right. It's to register your machine. Maybe they stopped doing three individual cards and just listed um, them. That could be. All right. The next one. So, Miss Brenda Snyder. So, when will you have the make and take class? It usually, it makes me use the machine. Maybe make a wall mural, tote bag, fake rhinestones on a t-shirt. I would travel for a class like that. We'll have to plan it. That sounds like a good class. That's a good idea. Yeah, that would be fun. Miss Pam said, thank you. And so Miss Gail said, thank you. If you don't mind, Miss Brenda, I'm going to steal that idea and talk to Ruthie about it. See when we can get it on the calendar. That'd if be anybody, fun. Yeah. If anybody has any other questions, just drop them down in the comments. You got anything to add, Miss Tina? No, just remember, you don't, I, I don't expect you to remember all the things we talked about today. I tried to give you lots of um, ideas, some inspiration. You can go back and watch the YouTube video when you're ready to do it. Um, but hopefully you'll walk away thinking, oh my gosh, I had no idea I could do that many things with my scan and cut. I got to get in there today. And with the same design. Right? I know. Just pick one and see what all you can do with it. Yeah. All right. Miss Diane said, I want to learn how to cut out snap tabs. Okay. And then, um, thanks, Tina. I've always learned so much from you. Oh, thank you. And Miss Pam said, thank you, ladies. Brenda said, thanks. Miss Kathy said, great presentation, Tina. I'm so excited to try new stuff now. All right. Whoop, whoop. All right, amazing class. I love this. All well, right. You're really lucky to, to have Ruthie because I've got to tell you, there aren't a lot of dealers in the world who do as much for her customers as Ruth does for you guys. Miss Pam says, You always inspire me. Oh, right back at you, girl. Ms. Gloria said, enjoyed the class. Ms. Brenda said, make it a two-day snap tabs HTV <laughs> on an apron. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to figure out the snap tab thing. I can't, in my mind, I can't even picture what that is. Is it like for a bag? Like the, like, like they snap I do together? Vinyl, would I cut out the little vinyl pieces that you put the snap on? I, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm, I'm willing to try and figure it out. Miss Vicki Anderson said, enjoyed the class. Roberta said, thank you. Now I'll be able to start using my skin and cut again now that I'm, I have unearthed it from moving. That sounds oddly familiar to me. <laughs> <laughs> she said, like a key fob. So, oh, oh okay. I got I it. Mommy, I know what you're talking about now. All right. Maybe we'll do that at the classes when I'm down there in May. I'll bring some vinyl with me. I'll make a note. Okay. Yes, very lucky we have Ruthie's. Miss Ruthie is why I have a scan and cut. Yay. Yes, a key fob. Okay. I hope everybody had a good Easter. Um, mm -hmm. 
and enjoyed this class. I hope y'all learned something. I mean, there's so much you can do with the scan and cut. And even when you incorporate it with the machines, it just doubles the possibilities and what you can do. It really does. Miss Roberta said, hopefully we will have more online classes in the future. And Miss Pam said, Miss Ruthie is why I do all this. Oh, Roberta, you got to come and see us again. I know it. All right. Does anybody have any other questions about appliques, um, layering vinyl, anything like that? Class on how to get cuts needed for embroidery applique. Miss Roberta said one day. All said right. So much for the class. Yes, more online classes. And don't forget, Miss Tina will be here in May. So y'all will have to stop by. Um, even if you live out of town, just make a day trip of it. Yeah. All four days because you want to win that $988 machine. Yes. Uh, but yeah, May, I got looking 10 at the calendar. 10th or 13th. So. Alrighty, if we don't have any more questions, we're going to start breaking it down. I appreciate y'all coming on here so much and learning more about the scan and cut. Thank you, Tina, so much for teaching us more about it. And um, yeah, do you have anything to add? No, I hope to see you guys in May. I really do. It's been a long time since I got to come there and I can't wait. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, I hope you all have a blessed day and we will see you in the next one. Bye, awesome. everybody. Bye.